My name is Marian Westgate. I am a member of the parish board here at First Church in Belmont. Please join me in saying, life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Hi, my name is Chris Holton Jablonski and it is my great joy and privilege to serve you as your minister and to welcome you to another worship with First Church. I'm so glad that you're here, especially for this very special service celebrating the solstice. I'm so grateful to Parrish Dobson, one of our worship committee, who will be sharing a homily today and also who helps shape and guide the service. Uh, it's a beautiful time of year as we approach this tipping of light as we're in the thick of the holiday season and i'm so grateful that we get to reflect on all this together but before we get going wanted to lift up just a couple things coming our way this sunday if you're seeing this sunday morning you still have a chance to come uh, to the church from one to three and pick up a holiday worship packet so this will have some candles for Christmas Eve candlelight service and some special paper for a New Year's Eve ritual of the taking up and the letting go. Um, always one of my favorite services. So do please come by the church uh, from one to three on Sunday the 20th and get one of those packets. And then uh, Ian and Nate have been working so hard on our Christmas Eve service as well as many dozens of other folks as you will see uh, so that'll be available on christmas eve morning and you can pick any time of the day probably we'll have people watching and experiencing the service from first thing in the morning all the way through till midnight so it's going to be a really beautiful service so enjoy that and then we'll be posting another one of my favorites the new year's eve ritual uh, the the following week, so on the 27th. So there's lots of wonderful worship coming your way and a very special treat on January 3rd for the Sunday service also. So we're really excited for lots that's coming your way. But for now, this stretch of wonderful moments that we're about to share together, come, let us worship together. Every Christmas time, I like to dig into at least one of the teachings of Jesus. Because so much of the rest of the story that gets told this year happens after his birth. And in many ways, 
what happens after in his teachings and his ministry is some of the most important part for many Unitarian Universalists. So one of the stories, one of my favorites, is the parable of the sower. And it begins with a farmer. And this farmer was out in the field sowing some seed. And the first time he threw his seed gently and the seed landed on some rocky ground. And that seed dried up and died. But the second time this farmer cast out the seed, he was looking for some better soil. And the seed, seed flew with great grace and purpose and landed in some good soil. And there was some pretty good soil and the plant grew, but there wasn't deep enough soil for the plant to grow strong roots spiritually mature, deepened roots. So the plant grew quickly and then waved about in the breeze a little bit and fell over and died. But then there was one other plant, one other seed. And the farmer having watched all that had become of the other seeds and become a better farmer for it, he cast some seed one last time and it landed sweetly, and there it found just the right soil, deep enough for growing strong roots, and the plant grew firm and strong, and it thrived. It put out leaves and was beautiful. For me, this parable is a lesson in being ready ready to receive truth, ready to allow wisdom and clarity to grow within us. Sometimes we're each like the hard and closed off and rocky ground. Sometimes we're shallow and can only have rapid and baseless growth. But other times when we are ready, when our hearts and minds are ready to grow, Sometimes we can flourish and thrive and blossom. Amen. Good morning. My name is Parrish Dobson. I'm going to talk to you this morning about three things. The solstice. Persephone, and the pomegranate. The winter solstice is tomorrow, Monday, December 21st, at 5.02 Eastern Standard Time. Solstice, the word itself means sun stands still. If nothing else were going on and we lived in different time and different kinds of lives, in which the sun and the seasons, harvest and rest, had our attention, perhaps we too would pause. We would consider the movements of our planet in astronomical terms, terms that are larger than our family or community, larger than politics, larger than pandemic. For these few days before and after, this now precisely measured moment, the sun does appear to stand still, to stop in its journey south on the horizon. There is a pause. In Earth-centered religions, this is the time of anxious expectation. Early Christians were wise to choose the days around the solstice also as a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. A few days after the solstice, we can begin to see the path of the sun change and daylight time increase. In so many traditions, the time around the shortest day is the time to celebrate beginnings, renewal, the coming of light. 
But at this moment, in human time, in December 2020, many of us are in a time of protection, caution, and retreat. The coronavirus holds sway in many places so, so tragically. There is hope for change, but not yet. If your holidays are ahead, these next days will be very different, no matter what your beliefs or traditions. We are all having to give up so much. All this makes me mindful of a myth that is relevant to the season, one that I'm sure you know, the myth of Demeter, goddess of the earth, and her beloved daughter, Persephone. Persephone is abducted by Hades, god of the underworld, taken from the light to live with him among the shadowed dead. Demeter goes into an agonized search the whole world over to find her daughter. Finally, Zeus tells her, my brother, king of the underworld, has captured her and keeps her for his consort. Zeus exerts his greater power over all the gods to demand that Hades return Persephone to the world of light. But something has happened. While in the underworld, Persephone has eaten six seeds of the pomegranate. And because those seeds have their own spell, deeper than Zeus's command, Persephone must for all eternity return to the underworld for six months of every year, one month for every seed she ate. I'm thinking about this myth and the solstice together. The sun is in pause and we are all held in the much altered world this pandemic has created, a kind of underworld, or at least a far more interior world than we typically live. And though there are signs of hope for this moment, our sun stands still, and so in many ways do we. We have to wait, change plans, reach for a deeper patience. We begin this season, this solstice, this Advent, more in tune, perhaps, with Persephone. We are called to embrace another consciousness, not despairing, but sober, realistic, patient. Change will come. Return to life as we knew it will come, but not for now. Like the sun, like Persephone in the underworld, we stand still. If you will, go with me on another thread of thought, this time following the rich symbolism of the pomegranate. Let's start first with the recognition that the pomegranate grows easily and abundantly in the Middle East. Many artists and religious thinkers believe that the apple tree in the Garden of Eden was most likely a pomegranate tree. The fruit then that awakened Adam and Eve to self-consciousness, to intellectual growth, to mortality, was the same that Persephone ate. In Christian art, pomegranates are often depicted in the hands of baby Jesus or the Virgin Mary. Let's look, for example, at this beautiful painting by Botticelli from the Uffizi. Mary and the infant together hold a pomegranate. There have been many different interpretations about what does it mean, this inclusion of this open, red-seeded fruit. One 
it, one interpretation is that the red fruit prefigures both the life, the blood sacrifice, and the death of Jesus. He is eating from the fruit of the Garden of Eden because, like Adam and Eve, he is mortal. But his death for believers will include the promise of a new life. Like Persephone, Jesus' association with the pomegranate signals both hope of a future return as well as acceptance of life and difficulties ahead. So, here is this luscious, complex fruit. So rich in iconography and meanings, so filled with seeds of life and symbolic of return. Lengthening days begin tomorrow. We can celebrate Christmas, festivals of light, Hanukkah, and gift giving, though this year it will be different. We are all being asked to be patient, to wait, to acknowledge that, like Persephone, we are in an altered world. But there is hope. Loving connections can be made with friends and family in different ways, but light will return. That is the message of the solstice and the story of Persephone and of the pomegranate in the hands of the baby Jesus who sits and looks at us so calmly, maybe wisely, in the arms of his mother. Thank you for coming with me on these three stories of our time. Be well, stay safe. The Savior whom they kneel beside Some children see him home and eye With skin of golden hue Sweet. Baby.
This is Winter Solstice by Rebecca Parker. Perhaps for a moment, the typewriters will stop clicking, the wheels stop rolling, the computers desist from computing, and a hush will fall over the city. For an instant in the stillness, the chiming of the celestial spheres will be heard as if earth hangs poised in the crystalline darkness and then gracefully tilts. Let there be a season when holiness is heard and the splendor of living is revealed, stunned to stillness by beauty. We remember who we are and why we are here. There are inexplicable mysteries. We are not alone. In the universe, there moves a wild one whose gestures alter Earth's axis toward love. The immense darkness, everything spins with joy. The cosmos enfolds us. We are caught in a web of stars cradled in a swaying embrace, rocked by the holy night, babes of the universe. Let this be the time we wake to life, like spring wakes in the moment of winter solstice. I love in the end when she says, let this be the time we wake to life like spring wakes in the moment of winter solstice. I am so grateful for what Parrish said a moment ago about the nourishing dark 
about the underworld, about the myth and its teachings, especially for us now. As some of you know, I studied comparative religion, and so the evolution of Christianity and its historical interaction with pagan traditions I find fascinating. I also had a bit of a crush on a historical Jesus scholar and professor, but I'm sure outside of my fascination with her and her incredible mind and sublime teaching, that there is something just genuinely fascinating about the complex knot of traditions which all collide in this moment. And especially for us this morning, something nourishing and guiding for us this year, this very strange and particular year. As I said before, I've always loved digging into one of Jesus's parables around this time of year. And the parable of the sower seemed just right for us as we dive even more deeper into this winter, into this time of fertile darkness, this time of retreat. I love the image of the seeds finding all those different kinds of grounds, especially this winter. I love the invitation of becoming fertile soil. What would it mean for you to become fertile soil for your spiritual growth? I have a special place in my heart for peonies. They were my grandmother's favorite flower, and as such, I have always tried to have at least a few, sometimes many, in my garden to remember her, but I also cherish their winter lives. They go entirely underground in the winter. Their gnarly, dramatic roots stretching and growing, all of the above ground growth dies back, leaving nothing. And then, as the season begins, these red shoots, outer space tendrils reaching out, and soon enough, the full riot of bush, and then the explosions of blossoms and fragrance, so full of life, they topple over with the weight of their joy. But now, in these darkened days, it's all underground, all deepening, all roots. And this is a bit of my prayer for us all, that we may become fertile soil this season. May we stretch down deep. May we be peonies, reaching down nourishing, growing strong, seeking our depth, and building for the spring which will surely come. Amen. Hello, my name is Baird Klima Smith. I'm a member of the parish board here at First Church in Belmont. This is the time in our service where we pause and we invite an offering to help support the work of the church and our partner organizations in the wider community. For the entire month of December, all the offerings from our church services will be going to the GROW Clinic. It's a wonderful organization. We've done a lot of work with them in the past, and they help support children who've been diagnosed with a failure to thrive. We have a long-standing relationship with them, so we're very happy to help them again. And it's very easy to make your donation. You can just go to our website, which is uubelmont.org backslash giving. And that's where you can make your contribution. Uh, thank you for your generous support. It means so much, especially right now. Torches, torches, run with torches, all the way to Bethlehem. Christ is born and now I sleeping. Come and Sing your song to him. Torches, torches, run with torches.
Becoming fertile soil, ready for wisdom and truth, peace and power to take root. We give thanks for the path of the sun changing and daylight increasing. We give thanks for being held in this altered world, this underworld, this interior world. We give thanks for reaching for a deeper patience, for the fruit of awakening, for pomegranates in the hands of Jesus and Mary. We give thanks for traditions overlaid and our path of finding connections. We give thanks for computers desisting from computing for the season where holiness is heard. We give thanks for this time in which we wake to life. So much love to you all. Amen.